Hello everyone, I'm Captain Logan, and as you're probably aware of uh, already, we today lost Roger Ebert, who was one of the most influential people of the 20th century. And I felt the need to talk about this because Roger Ebert is someone who means a lot to me, and certainly means a lot to... I would say many, if not most, of the people who are in this amateur reviewing game. And uh, I haven't prepared anything for this. Um, I'm just going to kind of uh, speak from the heart a little bit um, about how I feel about Roger Ebert and um, about how th th this is this is aff affecting me. Um, I, this I don't feel like is is so much like when an actor uh, passes away that, that, that you that you like a lot. Although it it, it can be the same thing, um, especially when you have an actor who does a lot of interviews and who you 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 do you do see talk about themselves and talk personally a lot. But by and large, when we feel something about an actor passing away, I, I talked about this a little bit when um, Michael Clark Duncan passed. Um, we don't really know the the man so much as we know his work, and uh, obviously everybody brings um, something of themselves into their acting work. But Roger Ebert is another thing entirely. Uh, this is a man who spoke from the heart all the time. This is this is a man who um, I think uh, whether he was right or wrong at any given point always. Uh, said what he felt, said what he really felt, and through his writing and through his uh, television appearances, I, I, he, this is a person that I feel like I got to know. And of people that I didn't know personally, Roger Ebert ranks right at the top of people that have greatly influenced me. And being a... Uh, being an amateur film critic, uh, and, well, critic of, 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 of other things, um, obviously I do as much comic book stuff as I do anything, but being, being an amateur internet critic, I, I feel like it's kind of a cliche to say Roger Ebert um, had a big effect on me. Uh, I think that's probably true of most of us, and, um, I, but I've, I've spent so much time reading his work and watching um, old episodes of um, At the Movies, and, uh, you know, I, I liked uh, Gene Siskel a lot, too, and um, it was, uh, of, of course, you know, a huge blow when he died, but I wasn't, that was back in, I, I think, 99, um, I wasn't obviously doing all of this back then, um, I was still a kid, and uh, I, I wasn't, I hadn't watched a whole lot of Siskel and Ebert at that point, and so um, Siskel's passing is, is, is a sad thing in retrospect, uh, this is something that is that affects me now. Uh, every time a film came out that I wanted to see or a film came out that I went and saw, um, I would look up uh, Roger Ebert's review and see what he had to say about it and see if I agreed with him. And very often I did, and very often I didn't, but he spoke with such conviction and he had... I mean, he had an amazing way with words, but he was also just incredibly knowledgeable um, about not just movies, but, but, but culture at large. And I just, I feel like I learned so much from him. Uh, Roger Ebert is definitely one of my personal heroes. And I, I knew this was coming. Um, you know, the, 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 the way his health has been the last several years. And obviously, uh, as you probably know, a few years ago, um, his... Uh, he, he lost his lower jaw because uh, because of his of his cancer, and um, so he wasn't able to eat and he wasn't able to speak. But admirably, he continued working and he kept seeing um, like five movies a week almost um, for the rest of his life. And uh, he kept working, and that's that's amazing. That's remarkable. And he he very easily could have just shut down, but. He used the internet as a way to continue his, not just working, but to continue to be social. Because, of course, he was a really extroverted person. And I always really admired that about him. Um, I, f I felt like when that happened to him, I, I wondered if he was going to retire. I wondered if that was going to be the, the, the end of his, his long legacy of film reviewing. And, and it wasn't. Um, we couldn't hear from him anymore. We, uh, um, you know, you know, auditorially, we could physically, we couldn't uh, watch him on television anymore. But he was still there and still had a huge presence on the internet. And um, this this technology we have now is um, amazing. That 
you know, it allows people that have those sorts of problems to continue to, um, to be, to be active and to continue being a presence. And, uh, I think, I, I, I think, uh, Roger Ebert would not have been the same if this had happened to him in, say, the mid to late 90s. Um, it, it's just, it's really great that he was able to continue doing what he loved for so long, and clearly he loved it. Uh, Roger Ebert didn't have to continue working. <laughs> clearly, uh, he's he, he he was well off enough that he didn't have to do anything he didn't want to. Um, I didn't always agree with with everything uh, Roger Ebert said. Um, I don't think Roger Ebert was a perfect person. Uh, who is? And uh, I know there's a lot of people that don't like Roger Ebert. There's a lot of people that think that uh, that he was really pretentious and arrogant, and that he he didn't know what he was talking about. Um, I think he very often really did know what he was talking about. And one of the things that he uh, said that, that, that he said repeatedly that always stuck with me was that as a film reviewer, you should go to a movie and no matter what it is, allow yourself to be entertained and taken in by it um, if it's going to do that. Um, do your, your level best to leave your preconceptions at home. And most importantly, he said, um, become part of the audience. Uh, a as a critic, don't look at yourself as above everybody. Uh, you're just a spectator. You're just a patron like everybody else. And everybody's... Um, Everybody's well-considered and well-informed opinions are valid. Uh, he didn't say, go watch something and know nothing about it and then talk about how bad it is because you don't understand it. He, he, he definitely, of course, believed in having a well-informed opinion, but... It wasn't. It, it, I never thought it was this pretentious, arrogant thing. And uh, he and Gene Siskel always, always both said that that was one of the few major things they, of course, agreed on. Was um, was uh, they they enjoyed movies, they studied movies, but they did it because they loved them, and they found them important because they saw them as our um, most important, the the our major um, modern. Uh, entertainment, our major uh, modern art, and it's mass consumption, and it's something that a lot of people see, so it's it was important to them that it was done well, because it influences the culture, and I agree with that, and that's a lot of why I like to review film, and... Um, that that uh, it's it's so easy when you when you start studying um, film or when you study narrative like like I do uh, to kind of look at yourself as above everybody. It's really easy to do that. It's really it's really easy to say, well, I know something that you don't know, and therefore um, I'm I'm better than you. Uh, I can I can uh, watch this movie and I can uh, see things that you won't recognize. I can see what was done wrong or what was done right in a cerebral film that goes over your head because um, because I've got um, the education I've got this piece of paper and um, that's that's not the way to approach it at all you, you want to have a good education certainly but um, movies are for everybody and uh, Roger Ebert just saw himself as um, someone who watched movies admittedly somebody who knew a lot about them um, who was just simply telling you what he thought about them and his his opinion was not paramount and he, he was he was not the um, as as a lot of people certainly saw him the the, uh, the final the, the final authority um, on on anything um, he was simply a one voice and he was a loud voice and he was a compelling voice and what I found so um, infectious about listening to Roger Ebert was his passion uh, and not always just what he had to say but the way he said it and how uh, he and how he thought about things, how he how he deeply thought about things before he explained them. Uh, there, there there were again definitely things I didn't agree with him on, and um, he he uh, like Roger Ebert gave Thor a, a, a one and a half out of four stars. Um, I don't know why he disliked that 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 film so much, and I I read his review two or three times, and it just. It, it didn't make any. It didn't make a lot of sense to me. Um, some of what he was saying about about that movie and about how how standard it was, and and um, it was it was one of those things where it was 
it, it did it did to a little to a degree seem like it seemed like he was kind of wanting one thing and it was doing something else and it was somewhat of a taste issue um, but then there were other things where like he, he would take up for he would very often uh, both take up for movies that nobody else seemed to like and then he would also um, by by contrast, he would he would very often uh, uh, not dismissed, but but um, he would he would have he would have issue he would take issue with films. Um, he would have reservations about films that he knew were going to go down as major classics. Um, two examples: he 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 would he talked about um, Clockwork Orange when he came, when it came out, and I think he only gave it I, I think maybe a two out of four stars. I forget, um, but he. He said, "Look, I know this is going to go down as as a masterpiece, and I don't think it is." And he was always um, he was always bold and upfront about about that. Um, he wouldn't just say what he thought he needed to say for people to like him. That's not what he was about, and that's not what Siskel was about. And then um, to the to the other side, uh, he reviewed um, Hitman, the movie based on on the Hitman uh, uh, video games, and he was one of the only critics that uh, that that actually recommended that film. I think he gave it a two and a half or three stars, I forget, and um, he said it's almost art. And uh, I thought that was really interesting, especially considering that, that uh, Roger Ebert didn't, didn't um, really really have um, much regard for video games, and he didn't think that video games were a place to tell story. Um, I used to agree with him, and I think that uh, that has changed over the years. I think at the time he was saying it, it was more true than it is now. Um, and it's funny because that very review got him in trouble with a lot of um, with a lot of video game fans, where where, where he, he he mentioned that he doesn't think that video games are an art form, and this was in a review about a movie based on a video game that he actually liked, uh, and I just thought that was really interesting. And, and for the record, I actually liked Hitman a lot better than a lot more than a lot of people did too. Um, I don't think it's great, but I, I, <laughs> for a video game movie, I thought it was better that it was better than a lot of people did. Um, boy, I'm gonna miss this. I'm gonna miss looking up Roger Ebert's reviews every week, and um, I'm gonna I'm gonna miss uh, his insights. And, uh, I, you know, it's kind of like, in a way, it's like losing a teacher. Again, I mean, I know I, I, I didn't know him, and he wouldn't have ever known who I was, but... <sighs> He was he was like he was like a rock. He was somebody that you could that you could always go to to um, to get a clear idea about what he thought about something. Um, he he always he was so decisive, and and, and again that was infectious. Um, I would. If I if I ever if I ever wavered if I was ever um, on a movie going I just I just don't know what I what I think about this or I'm I'm or or even um, you know I'm afraid if I re if I say what I really think about this um, then my audience is going to get um, you know you know uh, uh, really angry with me and I don't want that to happen um, I would go I would go to Roger Ebert and, and it wasn't so that I could regurgitate what he said about something. It wasn't so that I could take his opinion and, and, and put it in my review. It was so that I could remind myself that sometimes people disagreeing with you, sometimes even a lot of people disagreeing with you, is okay. Um, because it's better to speak the truth. It's better to say what you think than to try to just make people like you. Um, obviously, be as objective as humanly possible and be respectful. And um, there were there were definitely times that I thought maybe he he to a degree took pot shots at things, but for the most part I felt like he did that. And um, anyway, I just this is really sad to me, and I was definitely choked up a little bit, as I'm sure a whole lot of people were. Um, anyway, I know this is a little bit long winded, and I apologize for that. Um, but I, I I really wanted to get my thoughts out on camera, and um, if you're uh, if you're watching this, I hope you don't mind that I did that. And um, anyway, Roger Ebert is someone that uh, obviously. Um, again, has impacted the culture in um, a really profound way. Um, not just in you know he and he and Siskel having created you know the, the thumb system and and that um, you, you know the four star rating system. Which, by the way, Roger Ebert is the reason that I do the uh, the the uh, zero to four point scale on on superhero rewind. I know a lot of people have asked me about that. Um, why don't you use five stars like everybody else? Um, I, I like the four star rating. I've talked about that before. Uh, but but anyway, that's something I, I got I got from Roger Ebert. Um, it's just it's it's a, it's an even system. Um, you, you know you know two two is middle of the road. Four is excellent. Zero is why did I waste my time with this? Um, but I think that makes that that makes more sense than any other scale. And I always I always really liked that. But um, 
he didn't just create that. He made he made film reviewing a a a, a valid thing. He he helped. Not that it wasn't before, but it's just he he helped kind of make it in a way it's it's its own its own art form. Um, it and he kind of helped establish ground rules for um, how to do this. You know, standards. You know, um, how, how to do this with integrity and not just um, you know you know yelling at a at a screen or or um, you know uh, writing a lot of you know um, angry slanderous comments about something in an article and um it, I, th I think i think he, he he and siskel both helped to make it kind of a classy thing to do and um again there's so many of us reviewing things on youtube we would not be here without roger ebert uh reviewing would not be the thing that it is without without this person um and certainly not without gene siskel either so anyway, um, that I think is all I, I have to say about that. Uh, thanks a lot for watching, and um, I will come to you again very soon uh, with something much less somber. And uh, thanks again for watching. I'm Captain Logan. See you later.